So you've been looking at grandma and grandpa's old black and white photos, but don't you wish there was a way that you could see the colors that they saw back then? Well, you can using a deep learning model called Deoldify, and that's exactly what we're gonna do in this video. Ready to do it? Let's get to it. Now the cool thing about the Deoldify model is that it is all open source and it's available through GitHub. So what we're gonna focus on in this tutorial is cloning that down, installing the dependencies, and then testing it out. So we'll actually be able to take a black and white image and convert it to color relatively easily. Ready to do it? Let's go jump into it. Now, as per usual, we're gonna have a chat with our fictional client to give a little bit of background as to how it is that this model actually works. Let's go and have a chat. So, uh, Nick, do you want a new project? By new project, will you be giving me more work? Think of it as a learning experience. Yeah, what is it? I'd love for you to recolor some of my family's old images. Reckon you can do that? Definitely. We can actually use Deoldify, which is an open source model to do that. It actually works really well on videos as well. Nice. How does it work? Well, similar to what we talked about on the super resolution project, Deoldify actually uses a generative adversarial neural network, but it uses a special type of GAN called a self-attention GAN. So why does this model work so well? Well, aside from using SA GAN and some special transformations, there's some nuances that the developer used to get such amazing performance. They've actually called this form of training no GAN. There's no paper on it, but it sounds like the generator and discriminator models are trained in isolation by themselves, similar to how you might train a normal neural network. Then they're fine-tuned together, typically how you train a GAN in its discriminator generator type style. Cool, so I can theoretically use it to add color to my images, right? Sure can, we don't really need to get into the implementation detail. The package just kind of works. Let's give it a crack then. Welcome on back to the breakdown board. Now I lied just a little bit. We are going to go through some of the implementation detail, but we're going to keep it pretty high level. Now, first up, let's take a quick look as to what it is that we're actually going to do. Well, the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to take a black and white image. So this might be an image of just about whatever you want. So let's say we've got some mountains in the back. Oh God, those mountains are shockers. Um, and let's say we've got a car in the front with some wheels and little people. Now we can take this black and white image and pass it to the Deoldify model and this will actually recolor the image. Absolutely mind blowing how this works, right? So we'll pass it to that model and what we'll get out of it is a color image. Now the amazing thing about this is that it's been trained on so many images that it actually does a relatively good job. So we can pass something from the 1900s and it will pretty accurately recolor or give us a flavor for what the colors might have looked like back then. Now the specific model that we're going to be using as I mentioned before is called Deoldify. Now this is, you've probably heard about it quite a bunch of times if you've looked into this space. Let me write it down, Deoldify. And if there is a bunch of documentation as to how it's being built and how it's actually structured available on the GitHub page, but I'll link to that in the description below. Now, the nuance about this and the reason that it's been able to perform so well, I think, is what the author refers to as a process called no GAN training. Now, this is in fact still a GAN, but this particular method of training is quite unique in its implementation. Now, most GANs have a two parts to them. They have a generator, and this is the bit that actually goes and creates the image. And there's also a discriminator. Now the discriminator actually tries to pick out fake from real images. So fake recolored images from real color images. Now what the author actually describes is a process whereby he actually trains this in isolation. And this particular process is, I think, what's referred to as no GAN. There isn't a ton of detail as to how this is actually being done. So what would actually happen is you'd pass a black and white image to the generator and you would be able to go and generate the color equivalent of that. So you'd actually train against the colored equivalent of that particular image. So in this particular case, you'd actually have a colored equivalent 
of that particular image, right? And you would train the GAN to be able to fine tune and generate a similar colored equivalent. So out of this, you would get the color version. Now, the discriminator would have a fake colored image. So in this particular case, this, or this will be the real one. And it would have a generated color image. So let me go and draw a giant arrow. So in this particular case, that would be fed into the discriminator. The discriminator will learn how to predict one or zero with whether or not it's a fake or true color image. Now the no GAN process would train these in isolation. Most GANs you train them side by side. So that actually performs a little bit of a balancing act. So the author actually describes training in this no GAN process and then bringing them together to fine tune and get that last little bit of extra performance. But that's just a little bit of background on the Deoldify model. There's a ton of detail on the GitHub page. Let's jump on over into it and start testing it out. Alrighty, so Deoldify. Now, in terms of getting this up and running, we are obviously going to be using the GitHub repo that contains the actual model. And this is available at this link. So https colon forward slash forward slash github.com forward slash jantic forward slash deoldify.git. Now that link will be available in the description below as well. Now, if you actually go to this site, there is a whole bunch of information on how to actually go on ahead and use this and a little bit about the Nogan implementation that I mentioned in the breakdown board. Now, the thing about this though, is that it is not supported on Windows, but, but don't close this video. I've actually gone and jerry-rigged it to be able to get it to work on Windows. So there's one key thing that you need to do and that will effectively allow it to work. So it can definitely be done and we're gonna do that exactly now. But this is an important thing to note. So the GitHub repository is here and you can test it out yourself. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is clone that particular repo. Then we're gonna install a couple of Python dependencies then this is the unique bit. So we've actually got to download this custom model a little bit manually because on the or within the base package, there's a couple of errors that pop up. But if you just go and download it manually, it seems to work reasonably well. Okay, first things first, let's go on ahead and clone this Git repo. So full command is git clone and then the link to the GitHub repository. So https colon forward slash forward slash github.com forward slash jantic forward slash deoldify.git and then we're going to put it into a folder called deoldify so that last parameter just tells git or the git command where to actually clone that repository to so i've got a virtual environment already activated and this is going to go into this folder so in my d drive youtube and then forwards or backward slash 9-03-2022 deoldify you can clone this to wherever you want really um, all right so i'm going to paste that command and run it so that is going to start cloning that. And if we go and take a look what this looks like, or oh, we'll let that finish for a sec. Five minutes later. Cool. So that is now cloned. Now, if we go into that repository, so let me open that up and show you. So if we go into YouTube, the older fire, where are you there? So you can see we have now cloned the folder. So that de older fire folder there is what we're looking at. So in there, you can see we've got all the Git stuff. So we're looking pretty good so far. So that is the first step. So let's jump back on over to our to-do list. So we have now successfully gone and done this first bit. So clone that repo. Now, the next thing that we need to do is actually go on ahead and install some dependencies. Now, the first command that we're gonna use to do that is to get around a breaking change that I think is right now happening inside of OpenCV. So if you get this pep, 517 error the fix to do that is to go on ahead and install this particular version this might be fixed if you're looking at this in the future but just know that um you're going to need opencv to actually go on ahead and run this so we are first up going to cd into the deoldify repository so we're going to go into the folder so cd deoldify so if we type in uh dear you can see that we've got all of this stuff from the GitHub repository. If you're working on a Mac or a Linux machine, the command is going to be ls. I'm just going to clear this. So we're now inside that deoldify repository. So the first command that we want to go on ahead and run is this one here. So pip install opencv-python equals equals 4.4.0.42. So I'm going to copy that command. Actually, uh, yeah, let's copy it and paste it. So let's run that. So the full command is pip install opencv-python 
equals equals 4.4.0.42. So that is going to give us a version which works appropriately in this particular case. Cool. Now, the next thing that we want to do is actually go on ahead and install all of the rest of the dependencies that are from the deoldify library. And if let me actually show you where this is. So if I go into D, YouTube, do, 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 Oldify, go into the folder that we just cloned. So we are looking for a file called requirements. So if we go and open this up. So this is going to be all the stuff that gets installed by running this next command. So we're going to be installing fastai, 1db, tensorboard x, ffmpeg python, YouTube DL, JupyterLab, we probably already got that installed if you're running this inside of a Anaconda environment, OpenCV-Python. So we've just gone and forced it to install a specific version and pillow. But you don't really need to stress about this. This command is actually going to go on ahead and install this for you. So we are going to run pip install dash r requirements.txt. Really, really important thing to note. You need to be running this from the deoldify model. That's why we cd'd into it before. So if I go and copy this and run that command now, that's going to go on ahead and install all the other stuff that we need. So again, I've already got it installed, so it went relatively quickly. And now if we take a look inside of our environment by running pip list, we can see we've got a whole bunch of stuff now installed in there. But we're looking pretty good. So we can clear that. Now what is, let's go back to our to-do list. So we've cd'd into deoldify, so that's done. We've gone, actually, let's just do one big check off so we've cd'd into our deoldify folder we've gone and installed that we've gone and installed that successfully with no errors so we can now mark that second bit as done okay so the third bit so this is going to be critical when it comes to actually running this model so and this is what i had to go on ahead and do in order to get this to work on a windows machine you're going to need to download this specific model. So this is the trained deep learning model, which sits behind the scenes, which actually allows us to do all this cool deoldify stuff. Now this is available at this particular link. So HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash data dot deep AI dot org forward slash deoldify forward slash colorize artistic underscore gen dot PTH. Now I will again include this particular link in the description below. So you'll be able to pick that up. All you need to do is grab that particular link and go to it and it's going to start downloading the repository. So you can see that down there, All right? So it is how big? 243 megs. Cool. So that's going to go on ahead and download. And once we've got that, we need to put it inside of a folder called models. So within our deoldify, deoldify, folder we're going to create a new folder called models and we're just going to chuck that particular trained model into there so let me show you what that looks like so this is my root directory that i'm currently working in right so we've just gone and cloned that so we're going to go into the deoldify repository that we just cloned down from github we are going to create a new folder and i'm just going to call this models and once this file is gone and finished downloading from the web, we'll be able to just chuck it in there. So that, that's pretty much the main thing that you need to do. And then we'll be able to start up the Jupyter Notebooks to actually go on ahead and deoldify. So let's give that download a sec and then I'll show you how to copy that over and we'll get started. A little longer than a few minutes later. Alrighty, so the model's finished downloading. So if I go into my downloads file, you can see that we've got colorize artistic underscore gen dot pth. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy that and then into our deoldify folder. Right, so this folder here, we're going to paste that into our models repository. So I'm just going to paste that into there. That is the main thing that we need to do in terms of getting it set up. So we should be able to actually get this thing on the road now. So let's go back to our to-do list briefly. So we have now gone and cloned the repo. We've gone and installed the dependencies and we've gone and installed the stuff that's specific to deoldify. We've downloaded this model. So it should be called colorize artistic underscore gen dot PTH. And we've placed it in a folder called deoldify forward slash model. So if we go into our, let's just double check that. So YouTube, deoldify, deoldify. We've got a model called, or we've got a folder called models. So let me show you that full path. So this is my root folder. This is the folder that we've cloned from GitHub. So we've gone and created a folder called models and we've dumped our colorized artistic underscore gen dot PTH model into there. And it should be around about 250 to 260, 70 megs. 
Okay, so that is now done. So we've done this. And we've done this. Now, what we need to do is start up a Jupyter Notebook and then we'll be able to kick this thing off. So let's do that. So we'll go back to our command prompt and I'm just going to run Jupyter Lab. And then from here, we can actually get this thing started. So if you go into our dldefy folder, so this is our root folder. So we're currently inside of dldefy. If you open up imagecolorizer.ipymb, let me zoom in on that so you can see it. So imagecolorizer.ipymb, so that's going to be the main uh, Jupyter notebook that you want to work with. There are a bunch of others. So if you want to test those out, by all means, go for it. So this is what we're going to do. Let me make this a bit bigger. So this first command allows you to, or it registers your GPU. So you're going to need a GPU for this. I wouldn't recommend doing it otherwise. Uh, I think you could probably do it with CPU, but it'd probably take a little bit longer. So it looks like it can pick up CPU, but GPU highly recommended. Okay, so if we run this first thing, this is going to register our GPU. You can ignore this error. That's uh, just a uh, widget that's missing. It should still work fine, assuming you get this type of output. So device ID, GPU zero or CPU. Then the next thing is going to actually import some of the deoldify libraries or modules and set our torch backend then this bad boy so if you haven't actually gone and downloaded the model and put it into a folder called models this next line is going to fail so if i go and run this assuming all things hold equal okay so that is now working so it doesn't look like we've got any errors there now if you scroll on down there's this next bit which actually allows you to test this out so if you have a smaller GPU, you want to drop this render factor down a little bit. If you've got a relatively beefy GPU, you can bump this up all the way up to 45. But these commands are going to allow you to colorize images. So if we actually just use the sample images that are already in there, it's actually going to take this image here. Let me show you. which is huge. So it's going to take this image, which is currently in black and white, and it's going to colorize this. Let's actually test this out. So if I just step into that cell and hit shift enter, it's just like running a normal Jupyter notebook. This should go on ahead and colorize that image. If we get an error saying that we're sort of running out of memory, then we can drop this render factor down. So for reference, I'm running this on a 2070 super on my normal machine. So let's give that a sec and we should be able to see some results. And there you go. Take a look at that. How awesome is that? So it's actually gone and colorized that image. So if I zoom out, it doesn't seem to want to give me that. But you can see that that's definitely gone and colored our image. So that's what we started with. That's what we're getting back. How awesome is that? So it actually gives you a reference. So that's the, the base image. That is the recolored image. I am completely in awe at how cool this is. So it actually is able to effectively color that image. Now, if you wanted to go and try it on a different image, you definitely could do that. Let's also take a look. So it actually stores the results. So if you go into the deoldify folder and into result images, it's going to store the results out of the, or the colored results out into there. So you can see that that's now there. Now, if we go and test this out with a different image, so again, I'm a huge Formula One fan, so we're going to test some old Formula One photos. So um, old Formula One cars, Wikipedia. Uh, let's go to Wikipedia, Formula One. Surely there's a black and white image there somewhere. This one, Sterling Moss. What a beast. All right, so we're going to copy that image address. Just make sure it ends in a JPG or whatever or at least an image, uh, a valid image extension. So we can now go and paste that link into the source URL line. So I've just gone and grabbed this link. So copy addre image address, I've gone and replaced what's in the source URL line. And let's just double check what's in our results folder. So uh, that was from S ESR again, wrong folder, do, 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 YouTube, deoldify, deoldify results. So right now I've got the old image. So let's go and test this one out. Take a look at that. It's gone and recolored the image of Sterling Moss. And again, we've got that stored inside of our results folder. So if we wanted to go and use that, you definitely could. It started to pick up the greens of the hills. It's gone and kind of given a little bit of a greenish tinge to the Sterling Moss car. Pretty awesome, right? How sick is that? So um, let's, uh, let's try something else. So if we go and try uh, old images 
Oh yeah, these ones work particularly well. So um, let's go, uh, let's grab this image. So if we go and copy this image address, just make sure it ends in a JPG or PNG, that looks okay. And if we go and sub out this source URL, you could do this with um, images on your local repository as well. I'll show you how to do that in a sec. So let's just for reference, this is our black and white image. Pretty cool, right? Go and test this out. So if we go and run this cell, how awesome is that? How awesome is that, guys? So you can see it's gone and taken this black or white image and recolored it. I, I think that's absolutely phenomenal. This is one of the coolest models I've worked with in such a long time. And it's actually pretty good. I mean, it's gone and sort of picked up the pink and the hats. That, those flowers probably shouldn't be green. But I mean, it's picked up the blue in the, the suit. I think this is absolutely phenomenal. How cool is that? And so that's sort of the before and after there. Now, if you wanted to do this from a local image, you definitely can. So all you need to do is set the source URL to none. So we're going to set this to none. And then you need to dump your image inside of a specific part. So in this particular case, it's gone and specified test images. Let's go and download a different image. So what do we need? Some old photos, old photos. Uh, do, do, do. what about this one? Let's go and save this image. And we are going to save it into the, so deoldify, deoldify. So this is our GitHub folder. We're going to store it inside of the test images folder. So what are we going to call this? This looks like it's London. That's Big Ben. Um, so we're just going to call it London. All right. So inside of our test images folder, the test images, we've got a photo called London. I'm going to get rid of this image over here. And I'm just going to do it on London. So we are going to say test images, and then we're going to replace this with London dot, I think it's JPG, JPG. Take a look at that. It's gone and recolored it. I mean, London is pretty gray regardless, but it has gone from this image to this. So it's actually recolored it. I mean, London's pretty gray. I'm not too sure what I expected there. But how cool is that? It's actively gone and recolored it. Let's go grab one, which is probably going to have a little bit more color. What about this dude? Save him. He's going to be called dude. And if we go and change this to dude. Oh, that's a JFIF. I don't know why it saves in that format. Save image as all files. I'm going to save .jpg. That worked. That's worked. Okay, let's test that out. What have we called it? We've called it images.jpg. Gone and colored him. Uh, not the greatest results there, but it's definitely still colored him. I mean, it's given a little bit of rosiness to his cheeks and uh, colored his suit black, given the background a little bit of blue. What's another one? What about this? This is Melbourne. What is that? Flinders Street Station? Yeah, pretty cool. We'll call it Flinders. That's saved as JPG, so we can now test that one out. Flinders. Gone and colored the trams red, the buses red, background's a little bit white. It's just a sunny day. Trees, it's gone and made green. It's given the slight yellowish tinge to the bricks. How awesome is this, guys? Um, what's another good photo? Let's go old racing photos. I don't know. You know, I like F1 guys. Yeah, this one. Let's save this. Racing. I could do this all day. Racing. This is just so cool. Oh, look at that. That is a brilliant result. So it's gone and picked up the blue in the race cars. It's given the, the drivers their race suits a little bit of red. It's gone and colored out the people in the background. Richard Miller was there back then. Wow. Okay. I didn't realize the brand was that old, but how phenomenal is that? I mean, you could test this all day, but that sort of gives you an idea as to what's possible. Um, and remember the results are going to be stored inside of that results folder. So if you wanted to go and pick all of these up, you definitely could. So we've got the older uh, wedding party. We've got the Flinders street station result, the dude, 
London, I mean, London looking gray. I don't know what I expected there. And we've also got the racing results, but that in a nutshell is how to go on ahead and test this out. So remember we've gone, we haven't done a ton of stuff, but it actually gives you a whole heap of power. So we've gone and cloned that repo. So we went and cloned it from HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash github.com forward slash gentic forward slash deoldify.git. Links are going to be in the description. We then went and installed our dependencies. So really it's just open CV and then all the stuff inside of requirements. So TXT, and then we went and downloaded the model from this link here. And again, that will be available in the description below. And we went and ran our notebook. Now the notebook that we ran specifically is just called imagecolorizer.ipynb. So you can see that on the screen right now. And that is everything done. So we've gone and colored a bunch of images you saw like how cool is that so we've got this racing one it turned out really really well so you can see like that that is actually gone and stunningly recolored that and remember we took it from this this is like the black and white photo we went to that bad boy i mean come on look at that as if that is not awesome absolutely brilliant anyway on that note thanks again for tuning in guys hopefully you enjoyed that one thanks again for tuning in peace thanks so much for tuning in guys hopefully you enjoyed this video if you did be sure to give it a big thumbs up hit subscribe and tick that bell and let me know what you thought in the comments below did you get it working were there gpu issues that you maybe ran into how did the performance actually look like thanks again for tuning in peace